Hello, everyone. I'm Michael Bork from Meta. Today, you'll hear from two developers who've each found success in VR, albeit through different paths. First, we'll meet Tina de Beauvegro, a French entrepreneur and XR pioneer whose award-winning work in spatial computing has shaped platforms and guided global tech leaders. Next, we'll hear from Gulzar Hamid, a hobbyist developer who just released his very first VR app for MetaQuest. Both Tina and Gulzar will share their unique journeys and experiences with MetaSpatial SDK, and together, their stories show the incredible range of possibilities in VR development. When building immersive apps, the tools you have shape not just your workflow, they also shape the ideas you're willing to chase. I've been building spatial computing apps for a decade across headsets, glasses, and smartphones. Over that time, I've tried many different approaches to designing and shipping these experiences. However, I kept hitting some fundamental limitations in the dev tools that made me stop developing for these headsets a few years ago. I'm Tina, and today I want to share how Special SDK has helped me unlock new kinds of experiences and why it might do the same for you. Back in 2016, I co-founded my first company. We built innovative creativity apps with the goal of letting creators transform their imagination into immersive experiences. And I meant a lot of UI, dozens of panels and menus, layers of options, and a careful UX to keep it snappy and never overwhelming. And because I believe beautiful tools inspire beautiful work, we also had to make the UI elegant. The problem is, free engines like Unity are amazing at immersive environments, but they're terrible at building the kind of complex, responsive UI we needed. These platforms have more than a decade of legacy architecture. We have built with video games in mind, and we're always fighting against our needs. So after years of work around, I eventually hit my breaking point and decided to move on. Now, as a technical founder, I'm obsessed with finding better and faster ways to build for my customers. When Meta announced the special SDK, I had the opportunity to try a new and much more modern way to build apps for Quest that was more in line with my own vision. Getting started with special SDK was surprisingly easy. I have limited Android development experience, and before, I only built native Android plugins for Unity. But within one hour of setting up my environment, I had sample apps running on my Quest. For those of you who work with other tools, you get how that was my first clue it would be different this time. With Jetpack Compose, I can finally build spatial UI the same way mobile developers build beautiful apps. It's declarative, it's modern, and because it's popular, I can use AI tools to draft prototypes in minutes, then iterate using Compose previews in Android Studio. I can tap into years of existing libraries instead of wasting time trying to invent the well. There was this one time when I needed a dynamic progressive blur on background images, and there was already a package for this. I love that the special SDK uses the entity component system to manage its 3D objects. It makes it really easy to inject dependencies and build interactions and behaviors without having a heavy, fragile architecture. For me, that meant building 10 minutes experiences without the weight of an unnecessary complexity. I used to be skeptical, but these days, I am a big believer in immersive and special media. It's very quickly becoming a popular and casual way of consuming content in our headsets. Some partners want to build experiences that leverage different types of media, such as 3D assets, rectilinear videos, or even stereoscopic 180. I can combine Android's ExoPlayer with Special SDK to build a highly multimedia experience with seamless transition between the home page and the video player, real-time UI updates, and comfortable controls. On that front, I was more than happy to see the improvements made by the SDK team over the last several months, who are constantly pushing the limits of video rendering on Quest. Being able to control the pass-through and immersiveness is a game changer. It helps me have more control on the story I want to tell. Because remember, headset apps don't have to be all in VR to be impactful. With Special SDK, you can start with a simple floating window that's alongside other apps, immerse the user in an AR exclusive space. If it makes sense, you can enter the user into a VR environment, and afterwards, fade back into pass through or a multitasking view. One of my favorite tricks is using the pass through API to darken or tint the surroundings focusing the user on the content while still giving them special awareness. 
Since it's a fairly new and evolving SDK, I recommend adding the framework's documentation in your AI model's context, as well as specific pieces of code from samples. Getting to know the entity component system paradigm might be overwhelming, especially if you are coming from mobile. But don't worry, not all headset apps need 3D right away. So I suggest taking some time to learn how it works using the samples, and maybe ask for a workthrough using your AI. If you're ready to bring more 3D into your experience, make sure they will look the way you want them to with Meta Special Editor. Don't forget Quest is a standalone VR headset, so please avoid complex meshes, UI views, and having too many textures. If your app or experience doesn't need high-fidelity 3D rendering, I suggest considering Special SDK. You'll be able to iterate faster in days instead of weeks, giving you more time to ship a product that feels as polished as your favorite mobile app. And if you're like me, you may initially think learning to develop with Special SDK is a nice stepping stone for the day we can all wear these casual, all-day AR glasses. But you will be surprised at all the brilliant ideas you may come up with when trying the SDK for today's headsets. Whether you're a mobile app developer or curious about trying a new way to build special computing apps, I believe now is the time to try Special SDK. It's the right tools for the apps I want to build, and it made me excited to build for Quest again. From a hobby project, I never expected anyone to use my Meta Spatial SDK app. Now it has an active community across and it helped me find success in app development. This is the first app I have actually shipped and launched. And it has happened because Meta has made spatial development accessible for mobile developers like me. The first time I tried MetaQuest, I was absolutely blown away by the experience. I knew I was looking at the future of computing. After watching MetaConnect 2024 and seeing the Spatial SDK launch, I was immediately excited. I've been building apps and websites since college, mostly hobby projects that I never finished. But the hybrid sample app caught my attention. It showcased how an app could work in both 2D and spatial mode. As a mobile developer, I found the Kotlin-based SDK instantly familiar. The whole experience of seeing your app in 3D is amazing. It's a really cool experience that lets you create immersive experience without needing a full game engine. Initially, I found that viewing my phone through MetaQuest pass-through camera wasn't clear and I often had to take off my headset to check my phone. To solve this, I built an app called Spatial Phone App, which lets you see your phone clearly in VR. I started with a simple modification to the example app to get a hang of it. I first built a basic pass-through app and then added control features. My experience working in real-time video came in handy as well. At first, I thought no one would use it except me and I never planned to publish it. But after posting about it on Reddit, several people showed interest and asked for tweaks. That's when I got motivated to complete it. The familiar ecosystem made prototyping and building much easier. If you already have experience with mobile development, the learning curve is actually minimal. The API would feel instantly familiar and you can focus on building engaging interaction instead of wrestling with complex setup. To keep video and audio latency minimal, I made custom changes on the WebRTC stack to maintain good balance between quality and latency. I made use of hardware encoder, perform many adjustments throughout the stack from frame capture, encoding, transmission as bitstream to receiving on MetaQuest. What really motivated me was seeing MetaQuest multitasking feature at launch, which made it easy for my app to be used alongside other apps. The response completely exceeded my expectation. I now have a small but active community that I actively engage with across Discord. Community members started posting their creative uses scenario. Some people are using my app as a field of view tool for drone piloting, baby monitors, and others to be able to check their phone while immersed in VR. What surprises me most is how people found entirely new use cases I never anticipated. The community feedback has been invaluable and several users have requested feature like a built-in QR scanner to streamline the setup process. For my next major update, I'm going all in with the full immersive mode that will include a dedicated mouse trackpad experience for iPhone users, complete with a cinematic theater-like atmosphere. If you are a mobile developer, the barrier to entry has never been lower. The tools are familiar, the documentation is excellent, and there's a real opportunity to be early in this rapidly growing ecosystem. Try the MetaQuest experience, then start building. We should start developing and testing with users now. So when this technology becomes more accessible, we'll already be ahead of the curve, ready to shape the future.
My heartfelt thanks to my sister Gulafsha for her creativity in designing the posters and the banner of the app description page and to my wife Zoya for her unwavering support during the long hours I spent developing the app.